Hello everybody. Today I'm going to teach you a very neat and efficient blurring technique in Blender by using the compositor. Do note that this technique or method can be very situational when using it as a fake motion blur, but to be honest, if you plan on making a motion blur, it's best to just animate your scene and then pick an image from the sequence with the movement present, just you know, to get a more natural looking motion blur. Now this technique, however, is well suited for still renders and can sometimes even be better than enabling depth of field. Now with all that said, let's begin. Now I already have a scene set up here using the taxi model for the HDRI activity for my students as well as an HDRI, of course. I also added here a shadow catcher. So when that, ha so when that happens, when we have a shadow catcher, our car is not gonna look like it's floating. So let me just go here under on my object data properties. It's just a basic plane and I just enabled shadow catcher here and turn off the glossy for the ray visibility. Now, what we're going to do for this method is basically separate the environment and my main subject into different view layers or layers in general, just just like Photoshop, where you work with layers, right? So to do that, we're going to create a new layer, of course. So to do that, we're just going to click over here on the top right corner. It says here, view layer. We're going to click on this icon right here and then click on new. There we go. So now I have a new layer. Now I'm actually going to rename that maybe to background. And then for my other layer, I just click on this one for my list of layers present in my scene. This one, it's the original view layer. I'm just gonna call this one main, all right? Now, next up is we're gonna do, uh, actually, we're just gonna do a couple more setups first. So back to my main layer here we're going to go to our render properties. So it's over here, this camera icon here, and then we're gonna scroll down and go here under film. And under film, we're gonna click on transparent. So when that happens, when I go to here, I go to my render. All right, so as you see here, when I have my transparent, the back, uh, my HDRI is basically not present anymore, right? So, as we, there we go, just waited for the render. I, now I only have my car model and of course my shadow catcher, but my HDRI is completely gone. So that is what transparent does. Next up is we're gonna go to our other layer, our background layer. So what happened here already, we've already separated our 3D object here in our main layer. Now for this one, our background layer, we need to basically give this one the role of having the HDRI data or our background data. Now, before anything else, of course, we have to disable what we currently have here because if we have all of these active, we're still gonna see it. So what we're just gonna do, we I compiled them here into a collection. So if you don't know how to create a collection, just select all the objects that you want to turn into a collection and then press M and then click on this one, new collection. So what I'm gonna do, I'm going to disable them by clicking on this icon right here. It says here under collection, this little check box here. I'm just gonna click on that to disable them. And then I'm gonna go here to my layer properties over here. And basically what we're gonna do here, we're gonna enable one of our render passes. So I'm just going to select one of those. So I'm just going to select environment because that's what we need we're going to need the environment data of our scene. So I'm just gonna click on that. That way we can render out our HDRI as well, despite having transparency on. All right, so we're pretty much done with our setup here. I'm just gonna go back to my main layer to see that's still present over there. So all right, so all that's left now is to get our render data by rendering our scene. So I'm just gonna render that real quick. All right, now the render is done and I'm just gonna showcase to you what it currently looks like. See what we have here, I have my main layer. So it's just going to literally just see our 3D object here. And then if I go to my background layer and then I'm going to select my environment pass, there we go. I have my 
HDRI present and accounted for. Now I already have this composite, uh, my composite mode here, my composite layer, but we're gonna go to that now in a second. So with all that said and done, let's go to our composite. I'm just gonna leave this one over here. All right. And then let's go to our compositing. So to go to our compositing, we're just gonna go here on our menu bar and then select on compositing. All right, there we go. Now I currently have some stuff here. So I'm just gonna delete that. Now, by default, you're gonna have to click on this one on use nodes right here. And then you're gonna, uh, Blender's gonna spawn these two nodes right here. We have our render layer and we have our composite layer so what we're gonna do next is we're basically going to bring up all of our second data here another render layer actually so i'm just going to duplicate this one uh wait where is my all right there we go all right so i'm just going to duplicate this one by pressing shift d all right so this one is our main uh our main layer or our layer with our 3d object present and then this one will be our environment layer now i'm just going to change this one over here so it's currently on our main layer so we're just going to change that to our background now don't don't be frightened uh it's, that's pretty normal because you know our transparency is on so it's going to look it's it's going to look blank but once we add a couple of nodes here our background will spawn instantaneously all right so what we're going to do next is we're going to be adding a couple of nodes to our scene, specifically an alpha over and of course maybe a viewer node so we can actually so you can actually see the render that we currently have here. So actually let's bring up a viewer node now since I I have so you can see what's happening. So there we go. There's my viewer node and then I'm just going to link this one to this image here and then there we go there is our thing there is our car now i'm just going to actually before i do that let's actually add our core node that will basically help us achieve what we want here is an alpha over so i'm going to press shift a and then type in alpha over and then i'm just going to link this one here all right and then i'm going to connect this one to here and then i'm just going to combine these two all right all right there we go. Now we're pretty much good to go. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to connect our environment layer to our alpha over. Actually, this one is already in the wrong place. We want this one to be under here. And then this one, our environment background, we're going to connect this environment pass or env our environment data and then link it to the first image here. And then there we go. Now we have our full scene together and then when you'll see what when you'll see what's going to happen next in our factor in our alpha over if i try to reduce this one to zero it's gone and now i already have my background present so there we go so it's just a unique little thing so now a couple of facts here now there are a lot of ways to do motion blur in compositing so you could probably do a mask or you could probably do a couple of a separate mask and maybe I do an invert but for me personally this one is the easiest one to do and it's basic and it's very beginner friendly as well so if you're a beginner learn, trying to learn blender and, and compositing this is the easiest way to do it if you plan on learning compositing in blender so what we're going to do next is we're going to go edit our background layer let's add a blur because that's what we originally want we want to add a sort of blur to our background here so i'm just going to adjust my x-axis and then there we go so we're getting our blur already so if you i'm just going to showcase as well the full view over here there we go we're getting our blur so as you can see our blur node here is basically just altering our background layer every, every single data that's in our background layer and since in our background layer we only have our HDRI or our environment data it's only gonna alter that so there we go that is how you achieve blur using compositor in blender so I hope that helps
And if you have any questions, just leave a comment down below and we'll see if I find a question that is in that is easily answered, I might do it in another video. So until then, see ya.